Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. How do you read? Mary Merrick Elementary School, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Principal Jessica McMullen at Mary Merrick Elementary School. How do you hear me? Ms. McMullen, we hear you loud and clear. Welcome on board the space station. How do you read us? We hear you loud and clear. Thank you. We're going to turn it over to our students this morning to begin with their questions. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> Hello, Grace. So why can't you bring your Kindle up into space? <laughs> you know, that's a good question because there are a lot of very smart people on the ground and engineers who know how the computers work and they want to make sure they know exactly anything that's even like anything like a computer. Uh, they want to know exactly how it works and what's inside of it, so they control what we bring up with us. So uh, I can't just say, hey, I'm going to bring something and, and uh, have them allow us to bring it up. The other reason is because space has lots of radiation and it can affect electronic uh, instruments. So if I brought something up and it wasn't protected and already uh, had some extra protection put on it, then it might break just within a few days of bringing it up here. So that's why we can't just bring up whatever we want, only those things that the engineers have taken a look at and make sure it's safe. How high can we jump in space? Let's try that out, Tom. Let's see how high we can jump in space. I think it was beyond infinity, but uh, if you really need a measurement, maybe around 240 miles and 10 feet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luke. Why do we have a space station? That's a great question. We have a space station um, for several reasons. The most important reason from a space exploration point of view is to really get a handle on how, how it takes to engineer and make all the equipment that keeps people alive in space so that when we can we can take these lessons that we're learning on how to keep oxygen and toilet systems and food systems and electrical power all the things that we need to keep the space station running we get them running very very well so that we can take them to the moon or to mars when you guys are astronauts so we're laying the groundwork right now in the space station for you guys to go explore other planets the other reason that we have a space station is it's international in nature and all the 16 nations that work together to build it cooperate together uh, in this magnificent program that we have. Great question. How do I become an astronaut? Well, I'll tell you what, the way you become an astronaut is to start right now. You can start today if you want to be an astronaut. And one of the most important things the astronauts do is we bring our brains and our eyes and our hands up into space to do a lot of work, to build space stations and do research. And you need to start developing your brain right now. 
So working hard in school right now, doing the best that you can in all of your subjects so you can get good at learning stuff, that's the most important thing to become an astronaut. And uh, staying healthy is very important, taking care of yourself, because you have to be strong and healthy because we're so far away from the Earth, we, we can't go to a doctor and to a hospital if we have a problem. So we have to be very healthy to come into space. So you can start right now, today, becoming an astronaut if you want to. I heard you were doing a project in space about plants, and I would like to know what you're going to use to make the plants grow. Yeah, that's an interesting topic for us. Just like we talked about um, when you guys get to go to other planets, to Mar the moon or to Mars, you'll need food. And um, a way to get that food is to grow it yourself. And just all you have to do is fly the seeds. And what we're doing now on, on, with various experiments on the space station is to figure out how to make those systems, those plants grow. And the, the, the researchers design the module that the plants grow in to give it everything that it needs. There's the soil, the watering system, and a light source, all of which provide the plant the, uh, the necess necess necessary things for it to grow. And it's very interesting to watch how those plants grow in space. Um, right this second, we don't have any of those particular experiments going on board the space station, but they, they are a very fun ones to watch and catalog with pictures over time so you can see the pictures grow. But just like maybe you've done in some of your science classes as you take a picture every day of, a, of an onion or a plant that you plant and watch how it proceeds through life. How has space made your body different? Well, you know, space does make your body different. And one of the main reasons is because we don't have gravity. Our muscles and our bones don't have to work very hard. So our bodies actually start to absorb away our bones and our muscles get weak. We kind of start to turn into jellyfish. And it's important to not have that happen. So when we come back to Earth, we'll be able to stand up and walk around. We won't just be like mush on the ground. So what we have to do is exercise every day and we have a weight machine, even though there's no such thing as really as weight in space, still it's a machine that is just like lifting weights. And we work hard on treadmill with a bungee that's pulling us down into the treadmill. And that helps keep our bones and our muscles strong so we can be uh, healthy and effective when we get back onto the earth. What types of things do you do for entertainment? Oh, that, that's a fun question to answer. Um, well, one of the most basic things we do is enjoy each other's company. Uh, there's a crew of six, and, uh, and we all get along very well. So in the evenings and during meal hours, one of the most simple, basic human needs is uh, to interact with your friends, and that's what we do every day. Um, sometimes we combine that with sitting around the windows and looking down at our magnificent planet below us. We have this thing called a cupola, which is a, a, mo a small module with windows all around that we can look directly down at Earth and see the whole plan, the whole view of what we can what we can see from that one window area, and that's another favorite pastime of astronauts. And then, of course, in the evenings, in the quiet times, we read and watch movies. The mission control team is very nice; they'll send us up movies. Or I like basketball, so um, you might know that there's some big college basketball games going on this weekend, and I think tonight. So. Um, those are the types of things we do, but the most basic thing is enjoy our friendship and our international partnership. Do 
Did you bring anything personal with you on the trip? You know, we're allowed to bring just a few things, uh, personal things, with us on the trip. We got to bring a box about that big uh, and no more, just for ourselves, because we need to have room for our food, water, and experiments. But let me show you a couple things I brought on the trip. This is a, a little bear. Her name is Mishka. And I brought her along, keeping me company. I don't know if you can see her there. And also, I like to play guitar, so I brought some uh, guitar music. And we usually people bring some books along because we like to read books. And uh, we, we do have a guitar and a ukulele up here as well. So those are the most of the things that people like to bring up. How do you exercise in space? Well, like Tom said, it's a very important part of our day. We have a treadmill, a bicycle, and a weight machine. And we rotate uh, our activities on all three of those on, on different days. And, and often, well, pretty much every day, we do two of those three events. And always we do weight exercises because, um, just like Tom said, it's so very important for our bone health and our, and our muscle, mus to maintain our muscle tone. Um, and the bike and the treadmill provide the, the uh, aerobic fitness to keep our heart healthy. Um, the interesting thing about the treadmill, though, is the bungee cords are different. Depending on how much you weigh, you need different amount of bungee cords to keep you down, hold, hold you down to the treadmill in the same amount of weight to trick your legs to think that they're giving you the amount of resistance or weight lifting that you have on Earth. It's a very important part of our day, though, weight exercise. What was your um, first emotion in space? Wow, the first emotions in space. Well, I tell you what, it's a lot like being uh, Christmas Eve. You know, or waking up on Christmas morning, because you've been waiting for this. When you're an astronaut, you've been training for years. You've been waiting for this most of your life. And so you're very, very excited. You're also thinking really hard. It's kind of like a mixture of that and uh, before a big test, because you've been training a lot, and now you have to do what you've been training to do. So you're really focused on what you have to do, and you're really ready to work really hard also. But it's very, very exciting. And uh, the launch, whole launch process is one of the most exciting things I've ever done with all the shaking and the roaring. And uh, you've just come through that. So then you hit zero gravity, and you're ready to have fun and experience zero gravity, but also go to work. What does the atmosphere of Earth look like from space? Oh, that's a really fun question to answer because it's so pretty. We see the blue marble of, of uh, the Earth below us with the really bright, vibrant blues and whites of the clouds and the snow and the brown and green. And then just above that, there's a, if you look off the horizon, there's a small, skinny layer of, uh, of um, atmosphere. And it looks like this hazy sort of um, misty, thin surface, uh, thin surface around our Earth. And uh, if, you, if this is the globe, it's just a little skinny part 
right off there as we look onto the horizon and see the atmosphere. It gives a really, really cool um, effect to the horizon as we look below us. You know, uh, that's a great question. We have to really think ahead quite a bit, don't we? Because we're 240 miles away from the Earth, and we need a big rocket engine to get back to Earth. So if we have an emergency, <clears throat> there's three big ones. You know, if, if something uh, bad for us that got into the air, if we lost our air, or if there was a fire that broke out, or if somebody had a medical problem that they, need, they needed to get to the hospital, those are all things we have to take care of right away. So. We trained for two and a half years for this flight, and a lot of that time we, we trained to take care of emergencies if they were to have, if they happened, so we wouldn't even have to think about it. We'd just do it. As soon as we uh, came to the emergency, we'd do it. Now, if things got really bad, uh, we have our spaceship to get home with, and in about a day, we could uh, safe the space station, turn everything off, get into our, our spaceship, and come home. And that's only if things got so bad we couldn't handle it, but we have a lot of smart people on the ground and a lot of equipment so that we can take care of almost any emergency that happened. Okay, guys, we just got word that the space station has to go. We only had them for a full 20 minutes, but if you guys will, tell them thank you and wave bye to them. They can see you and hear you. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye, everybody. Those were great questions. Great talking to you. See you on Earth in a little bit. The station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Merrick Elementary School and students. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.